Humble Mug. Hey everyone, welcome to the Humble Lounge and today I just wanted to do a channel check-in, channel update type of video. I've been wanting to do this for a while and today just felt right. So first off I wanted to just thank you guys so much for all of the support this year. 2024 has had some of the highest highs and probably the lowest low that I've ever experienced with losing my brother. But one of the constants in my life that has remained continuously positive this year has been this channel. It's extremely fulfilling to be able to talk about new games and games that I really enjoy and then see that positive feedback loop where you guys are also gushing about your favorite games or telling me how much you love that game that I'm talking about. And that's the sort of positivity that I was hoping to cultivate here. Of course I get some waves of negative comments from time to time, but for the most part everybody has been so nice and it's been really cool to see familiar faces from video to video. Or familiar usernames, I guess. The channel has progressed way faster than I would have ever anticipated. I was thinking that maybe by the end of the year I would hit a thousand subscribers, but more realistically it looked like maybe around my one year anniversary in February I would hit that. But then all of a sudden, two months later, out of the blue, my gauntlet video exploded, and then Eve of Calamity right after that, and suddenly within a week I was completely crushing every goal that I had in mind for this channel. It was absolutely insane to see that growth so quickly, and by the time I started to make sense of it and started thinking about maybe making a 1000 subscriber thank you type of special, I had already passed that threshold and it felt outdated. So this is me thanking you guys now. I can't describe how great of a feeling it's been, and it's not all about the numbers for me or anything like that, but it is validating to feel like I'm doing something that has had some sort of positive impact on people's lives. You know, on this channel I've not even shown my face yet, it's just my voice and my thoughts, and to know that there are over 3,000 people who have chosen to follow me because they feel like I have something valuable to say, when there are thousands of other better choices out there, you know, it's just... Pardon the pun, very humbling. So I wanted to make sure that I said all of that first before I go to anything else because I really want you guys to know that I'm extremely thankful. So before I get to the wild unscripted mess that is the channel update that I wanted to talk to you guys about, I'm going to first go over the Q&A that I did. So recently I posed a question on YouTube just letting you guys know that I'm open to answer any questions you might have. And I also put the question out to Blue Sky. And by the way, if I happen to miss any questions, chances are that I already had this video recorded before your question was asked. I'll make sure that I get to you next time. The first one comes from Restoration Relaxation, who says, First off, how dare you? How dare you, sir? No, sorry, you're probably right. I'm sorry, it was my fault. And the next question they asked is, What's your favorite game to play that is generally disliked? My wife's is Crazy Frog Racer. Um, I would have to go, you know, maybe just because racing games are on my mind now because of what you said. I've got to say Sonic R. Sonic R is like a super overhated game in my opinion. It is not mechanically sound. The controls are really wonky. The game itself is pretty janky and it's also super short on content. I think you can beat it in like 30 minutes probably. Probably an hour if you're just playing it for the very first time and trying to get used to it. But the soundtrack that's on this thing is a freaking banger. They even did the soundtrack in full very recently for one of the like Sonic Symphony performances. And I watched as much as I could from that performance because I legitimately really love those songs. I mean, Sonic as a franchise in general is known for having really great music, but Sonic R's soundtrack in particular is just super underrated and such a feel-good vibe. And also just gameplay-wise, I mean, every time I play it, I just kind of pick it up and play for a few sessions, and I normally just play a Sonic. But it's really fun in my opinion, and I feel like if they really revisited this title and remade it from the ground up, and of course added in more characters now that the franchise has been running a little bit longer, I think it could be a really good game. Okay, and so my next question comes from Perilous Realm who asks, what video game character do you think is most similar to you? That's a really good question. I had to really think about this for a while to kind of decide whether this really counted because in his game he is mostly a silent protagonist, but there are a lot of elements in this game where you get an idea and a sense of who this character is even though he doesn't talk often. And there are moments in this game where you also get a glimpse into this character's mind and what they're thinking about. So I feel confident enough to say that the character that I feel like I relate to the most is Ness. And I'm extremely lucky that Earthbound is one of the first games I ever played. And so I've known this character and identified with this character for a majority of my life. 
Like I said, Ness is mostly a silent protagonist, but there's a lot that you can glean from him as far as his characterizations go and some of those early reactions in the game. You know that he's good at sports. He plays baseball. His main weapon in Earthbound and Smash are baseball bats. But also, like, really early in the game, there's a part where you go into this little, like, clubhouse that the kids are all hanging out in and one of the kids talks about how Ness is so good at sports and things like that and how he's always admired certain professional athletes and things and so you kind of get a sense that Ness has to have some sort of inherent athleticism and growing up I always played a ton of sports um, that was one of the things that I really enjoyed doing and I was always like naturally like pretty good at a lot of that stuff another thing is that Ness cares about his family a lot and you can see that by the fact that he gets homesick often in the game. When he travels from town to town and goes throughout his adventures in Earthbound, there's a status effect that only he can get called homesickness and it severely limits his combat ability and his ability to do much of anything in the game. And the only way to fix it is to either talk to his mom on the phone or to visit her in person. I've always been really close with my mom and I feel like if I was in his shoes I would do the exact same thing. And I don't really want to say any spoilers because there are a couple other instances in this game where you get a glimpse into like what specifically is going on in his mind. And I'm not really going to reveal like how that happens or what is said necessarily. But you just come to understand that while Ness knows that he's talented and like good at certain things, there are also a lot of things within him and his own character that kind of holds him back. And I do relate to that a lot, like when I think about my own talents and my own dreams and and where I see myself going in the future and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so Converse Promise asks, what is your favorite mascot character of all time? I'm really tempted to say a lesser known character by comparison, like Spyro or Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. And I do think that Sonic the Hedgehog is the coolest mascot of all time, but I have to say Mario. I know it's super basic, but I grew up with Mario. Mario is the first video game franchise to really like capture my imagination, and I still think about that universe all the time. And I think he as a character kind of gets a bad rap, you know, like there's those kind of game theories that talk about how he's evil because he stepped on Luigi's shoe one time or whatever. But Mario loves his brother, and Mario also is just a paragon of positivity. Like he's always doing his best, he works his ass off to do what he has to do and he's always someone that's dependable and someone you can count on and I've just always been a huge fan of that franchise like I, I know a lot of people who grow up with Nintendo they tend to move on like Mario is kind of like the gateway into Nintendo's games and a lot of people tend to move on and then become like a Zelda fan or like a Pikmin fan or Metroid is another one I see come up a lot with like older Nintendo fans but um, I never really graduated from Mario. Like I love Zelda, I love Pikmin, I love Metroid, but Mario is still my favorite. As simple as his games tend to be, they're all expertly made, you know? Um, and I can just always count on Mario being a good time. And they also had two more questions for me. The first was, what is your favorite genre of games of all time? Um, I would have to say RPGs. That's definitely what I feel most compelled to say. Admittedly, like I've not played as many RPGs as you would probably expect, considering that I'm giving you that answer. Um, and that's just because RPGs take so long to get through and I get distracted often. And I've also had a big gap in my life where I either wasn't playing video games or I was mostly playing multiplayer games. But RPGs were the first genre to really like show me what a video game could be outside of you know arcade experiences or platformers they really are the first instance where I found something in video games that like moved me emotionally and I've been a sucker for it ever since and so now with Humble Mud I'm kind of making up for lost time most of the games that I've played this year are RPGs. Um, on another note though, I do also really enjoy hack and slashes, um, character action games, not necessarily souls likes, I don't like dislike souls likes, but souls likes are all over the place right now and I kind of missed the boat when the trend first started. So while I've played like Elden Ring and some stuff like that and the Dark Souls remake and I've enjoyed them, I really still kind of lean more towards the power fantasy character action hack and slash type games. I also really like a really well made boomer shooter but again that that genre is starting to get a little oversaturated too, but Doom Eternal is just perfection. 
in game form. And another genre that I really hadn't thought about as much as like one of my favorites, but I've got to give it that title because I just, every time I find one of these games and really enjoy it, I really fall into it. I love arcade racers. I feel like mechanically there's not always a lot to talk about, so that's why right now the only video I have on something like that is on Excite Truck. But in the future, I'll definitely talk about racing games because arcade racers are just a very comfort food type of experience for me. And I'm always finding new arcade racing games that just blow my mind. All right, and Converse Promises last question was, what are the newest games that I'm most excited to play? So at the time that I'm recording this, it's not out yet, but it will be out the day that I'm putting this video out. Romancing Saga 2 Revenge of the Seven is out, and I'm super excited to play that. Uh, looking further out onto the horizon though, Mario and Luigi Brothership looks amazing. I grew up with Superstar Saga, and I would love to get back into the series with this one. Gears of War E-Day coming out next year looks really, really cool. I like how they're actually going and taking us to the early stories of Marcus Phoenix and Dom. And again, I've not been involved with that franchise for a long time, so to come back now feels right. Expedition 33 looks like the modern Legend of Dragoon sequel that I've always been kind of looking for, so I'm hoping that that game does super well and maybe encourages Sony to rethink a Legend of Dragoon remake or sequel one day. And the game just looks phenomenal. And there are a couple of indie games that I'm really looking forward to as well. I'm not going to mention all of them here because there's literally like hundreds. But uh, Mecha Blood looks really, really cool. I've seen a lot of video for that as that game's been worked on. And I really like the look of that game. And Slain Back from Hell, which I talked about in my Halloween video, is legitimately one of my favorite games ever. And Slain 2 looks incredible. So I cannot wait for that. That will be like a day one purchase. Thank you for those questions. Uh, the next one is from Jur the Orc 8117. I'm sure I might have mispronounced that somewhere, but they ask, what's a mechanic in video games that you haven't seen much but wish was explored more? So I feel like I have to first say the Nemesis system that you see in like the Shadow of Mordor games. I know that that system I believe is copyrighted by Warner Brothers, which is just ridiculous, but there are so many games that could greatly benefit from a system like that. Um, just too many to list that would benefit from a Nemesis system. So I gotta say that first. Um, some more specific to myself though with like my own gaming experiences, I'm going to shout out Quest 64. I know I always talk about Quest 64, but Quest 64 has a really cool leveling system where the way that your character levels up is actually by doing certain actions in game. So if you want to level up your attack, for example, you need to attack physically. If if you want to level up your magic, you need to use your magic. If you want to level up your agility, you need to run around, you need to dodge. If you want to level up your defense, you have to actually take some hits. I really love that system, and you don't encounter this system very often. Uh, my friend PK in the Universe actually did this really cool comparison where he showed how Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII actually has a lot of similarities with Quest 64. So that's a modern game that you can play now that borrows a lot from Quest 64 in a sense. Now I'm not going to go out and say that they stole this mechanic from Quest 64 or consciously took it from Quest 64, but there are a lot of parallels that he kind of outlines between Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII and Quest 64 that I would have probably never known about and now I really want to try Crisis Core because Quest 64's leveling system was really cool. It was cool back then and it's cool now and it's still much to my surprise something that's not really done often in games. All right, and they also had a couple other questions for me. So what is a game that has strongly resonated with you even if there are severe flaws with the game? So I almost went with Quest 64 again, but I thought that would be kind of lame. So um, Super Smash Brothers Brawl is still the one in my brain that like really sticks out as far as how hype it was. And a large part of that was due to the Smash Brothers dojo that Sakurai would run where every single day there was an update. And I remember I would check the site every day before school. And if I couldn't check it before school due to, you know, like running late or whatever, I would rush home and try to see what the next update was. And I also think the graphical leap from Melee to Brawl was really impressive. The way that it adopted this sort of dark look to it and the way that it brought in the 
story mode in the form of like the subspace emissary and all of those things. I think Brawl had a lot of really cool features to it. It had a stage editor. I remember my brother and I used to try to recreate Halo maps inside of Super Smash Brothers Brawl because, you know, this was 2008. Halo 3 had come out in 2007. So I remember us specifically trying to recreate maps like Ascension and Lockout inside of Super Smash Brothers, and it was a challenge, but we kind of got a decent interpretation of those maps back then. And yeah, still to this day, like, Brawl has a lot of flaws. You know, the balance is crazy, Meta Knight is way too strong, and tripping is horrible. But even tripping sometimes, I remember, was kind of cool when you would have this really close fight where you've got 148%, the person you're fighting has 135 and it's it's anyone's game, and then you both trip at the same time, <laughs> and then you're like scrambling because it completely throws you off guard. Um, I know competitively that was not a feature anyone liked, and I'm not advocating and saying that it needs to come back or anything like that, but I have a lot of really fond memories of Brawl. I kind of go back and forth between Smash 64, Brawl, and Smash for Wii U as being my favorite titles, but Brawl really, really stuck with me and left an impression, and it felt like a huge step up from Melee. Okay, and then Jer the Orc also asked your favorite animals, pieces of music, favorite artists, favorite bands. Um, so when it comes to animals, I've always been a huge fan of elephants, white tigers, owls, and manatees. Um, elephants are just really stoic, white tigers are gorgeous. I saw one in a zoo when I was really young and it like blew my mind. Owls are just so mysterious and wise, and manatees are just water potatoes. Like, I mean, what can you say about a manatee? They're just so adorable. Um, as far as people pieces of music or favorite artists or bands. Um, Sum 41 is my favorite band of all time. They have been my favorite band for as long as I can remember. They were the first band that I felt like I kind of discovered on my own. And similar to how I felt with Earthbound, like I was just lucky enough to find that band early. Um, I've also been lucky enough to meet pretty much everyone in that band. The only person that I've not met formally in person is their newest drummer. But other than that, I've met everyone else in the band. I've had conversations with all the people in the band. They're all great people. Um, I loved their newest album and they really just kind of grew with me as I grew older and my music taste changed. So it was really cool for me personally to see this band that was like Green Day pop punk at first and then they had some heavier stuff and so right as I started to get into heavier music they were also there. But um, yeah, I love all kinds of music. I listen to, I know everybody says that, but I listen to electronic, I listen to folk, I I've even started listening to a little bit of like old country like Johnny Cash. Um, I love death metal. I love pop music, you know, like I can listen to something like Sabrina Carpenter and then I can listen to something like Bolt Thrower right after that, you know. I'm really all over the place when it comes to music and, you know, coming from a musical background that's, I guess, par for the course. Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of different bands from Devin Townsend to jazz bands like Snarky Puppy. So yeah, I love music. Coven Nova asks, and this was on uh, Blue Sky. I recently moved over to Blue Sky from Twitter. Coven Nova asks, which is better, Coke or Pepsi, and why is it Dr. Pepper? So that's actually kind of funny because I live in North Carolina, and that's where I was born, so I feel like I'm kind of obligated to say Pepsi because that's where Pepsi originated from, but I honestly have to say that I do drink Coke more often, um, and then taking that even a step further, nowadays I drink Summit. So Summit is, I guess, Aldi's generic brand of coke and it's super cheap and so that's why i pick it up you can get a 12 pack for like 250 or like three dollars it probably causes cancer but it's a lot cheaper and i don't really notice enough of a difference for it to bother me i don't know i enjoy it and it's funny that you mentioned dr pepper i don't actually drink dr pepper that much anymore um but in high school i used to drink it all the time and i specifically remember that around that time was the time that the south park episode came out where they were talking about how dr pepper is like the agnostic strength of choice because you can't really tell if it's like a cherry soda or like a cola like no one knows and I always just thought that was so funny so every time I think of Dr. Pepper I think about that South Park episode it's a classic. All right, and so this question comes from Zero298, and again, I might have mispronounced that. Maybe it's supposed to be Zero. I'm not sure. Um, what's an example of a video production challenge you overcame and want to share it with creators so they don't have to learn it the hard way? Oh my gosh. Um, that one is a big one. 
So there's a lot of things that I've learned over the course of making this channel because I was kind of teaching myself how to do video editing in 2023 and not formally, like literally just learning step by step and trial and error. And I would have this vision in my head and be like, okay, I want it to do this transition or to look like I'm doing this thing with this character, how do I do that? And I would just kind of figure it out. So there are a lot of things that I've learned kind of the hard way. Um, and so I'll also say I use Camtasia right now, which I know isn't like a super common video editor. So some of these things might be, you know, super easy in whatever video editor you're using. But one really small thing that I didn't know, and it's kind of frustrating because for the first half of videos that I've made so far, I didn't do this, but I didn't realize that my output settings on some of my early videos especially were only outputting at like 30 frames a second. So the way that the program defaults is to put out video at 30 frames a second. And as you guys probably know, being gamers, a lot of games strive to aim for that 60 frames per second mark. And so if you look at certain videos, I don't, I don't want to tell you which ones because it just bothers me. So I don't really want to highlight that. But if you look at certain videos that I have from like earlier this year where a character is moving like really really fast there are all these like particles and um distortions i guess like in the environment surrounding them and i assume that that's because while the footage i captured was at 60 i'm only rendering it at 30 and so it's just not keeping up with it I could be totally wrong with that, but I've noticed that ever since I started rendering all my videos at 60 frames per second, they look substantially better and smoother. Um, so it's one of those things that unfortunately you might not notice until you change it to 60 and then you're like, oh my God, this is so much better. And then you just want to delete everything you did prior because it looks like crap compared to that. Another thing is that in my video editor specifically, it has like a quality output. Um, percentage that you can change so that you can kind of control like the file size and at least with my video editor it says that anything above a certain percent like 70 percent quality doesn't result in very meaningful graphical fidelity increases so it kind of says like hey um if you put out a video any higher than 70 percent then you're just going to balloon the file size of your video without actually seeing a lot of visual betterment you know in the quality of the video um and that's just totally bs max that thing out to 100 percent, and you will notice that video looks way better so um one of i guess what my advice is there is check your video output settings because if your video doesn't look as good as you remember it when you were like editing it or whatever it might not be YouTube's fault. There might be something in your settings that's actually holding you back. And so, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there because that might save you a bit of a headache looking at your capture card or looking into YouTube and trying to figure out why your video doesn't look so good when it actually it was just one little checkbox that you didn't check or something like that before you outputted the video. Another thing that I see a lot of people struggling with, and it's something that I struggled with too, is thinking that every video has to be perfect before you can get it out there especially like when you're first starting your channel you know you want to make a good first impression so like do give it your all I tried to better myself with every video I make I try to see some forward progress in some way like maybe this newest video I just put out doesn't have quite as many cool edits as the video I did before but maybe the voiceover sounds better or maybe that transition I got from 4.55 to 5 minutes in just looked really cool and I didn't know how to do that before you know there are these little things that you're going to pick up over the course of your journey so I would say it's a lot more important to get a good quality video out but it doesn't have to be a perfect quality video you know because if you're always aiming for perfect quality videos every single time you're never going to get them out and until you reach a certain audience size where you can afford to just put out like one video a month or something like that it's just not feasible so it's better to i i had to kind of learn to unwind myself because initially i was releasing videos once every two weeks now i'm releasing once a week so I have to figure out how to make that quality still what you expect from me, but in literally half the amount of time. And so I'm not skimping anywhere. I'm trying my best to create really good videos, but I'm also not being quite so hard on myself about getting the exact shot that I want to make. 
And nine times out of 10, the image of the shot that you have in your head, if you're not able to make it a certain way, there's an alternative that works just as well or even better. So yeah, that's some advice I would give to those starting out. So the next thing I want to talk about is the content that I'm making and how I choose to make the content that I do. You know, when my Eve of Calamity video popped off, a lot of people understandably went to the comments and said, hey, I think you found a format. You should start treasure hunting for more hidden gems and things like that. And while I do have a passion for that, I love looking for hidden gems. I love finding games that people don't really know about. I love finding games that are way better than they have any right to be. And I've always been an indie head. That's why I also talk about games like Exophobia and Declines Drops and all of those Halloween games. Recreating like the magic of the Eve of Calamity video is not something that I could just fake or do on a weekly basis. You know what I mean? Because the way that the Eve of Calamity video happened is the developer just reached out to me. I had never met them before, I had never heard of them, I had never seen anything about the game prior. And to be honest, just based on first impressions, I didn't even know if I was going to like that game. I just literally told myself, like I said in the video, that I was going to give it like an hour or two and see what I thought. And then the more and more I played it, I was like, oh, I've played five hours of this game. I think I like it. And it started to turn into a video naturally. So I think a lot of people were expecting me to cover some sort of hidden gem or another indie video right after that. And as you can see, if you look at my channel right after the Eve of Calamity video, I did a video on Astrobot because that's what I was playing. <laughs> and while Eve of Calamity has over 100,000 views, my video on Astrobot might have 400 by the time I post this video. I'm always going to be doing myself a disservice algorithmically because what I want to do on this channel is talk about whatever it is I'm passionate about at that time, whatever it is I'm playing at that time. I don't really want to pigeonhole myself anywhere, and while I understand at the end of the day I'm trying to give you guys entertaining content, I also want to hold true to myself and who I am and the games that I like to play and I do jump around a lot, I've always been like that. I made a post about that on social media actually pretty recently. Even when I was a kid, I would jump around between three or four different games all of the time. And I know just trying to imagine playing like I do, where you jump around between four or five or six games at a time, is probably really stressful. I know a lot of people who only play one or two games max at a time, and that does result in me sometimes playing eight hours of a game and then never coming back to it, and then coming back to it maybe later that year or the next year. It does cause a lot of problems. I'm extremely unfocused. But that's just how I've always been. That's how I always play games. If I stay on one game, I tend to get burnt out. Even just alternating between two games, I sometimes get tired of both and then I just stop playing. And so while I realize that it results in me taking a little longer to get further in a game, and it also results in me sometimes falling off from a game that I really enjoy, I just decided to embrace it because that's how I've always been and I've never been able to shake that feeling. And now I've found a really good balance with gaming where I have all of these games that I'm really passionate about. And so at any given moment, there's probably five different videos that I could make about all of those games. And sometimes on this channel, I've had content prepared in advance, but lately I've been going almost week to week. So by the time the Pokemon video dropped, for example, I had no idea what I was going to talk about next. And then the developers for Declines Drop started posting a lot of content because their game was about to drop and I was like, oh yeah, that game. So I started playing it, loved that, and made the video. So hopefully that gives a little more insight into the types of content I make. I know it's going to disappoint some people. Again, with the Pokemon video, a lot of people were saying, oh, I can't wait to see what you do with Gens 4 through 6, but the truth is I've not played a lot of those games. I've jumped around a lot when it comes to Pokemon, so I don't know if that video will ever come out. Maybe it will. Maybe one day I'll decide, oh, I've got to get through Diamond and Pearl, and so I play those, and then that kind of kicks off another video topic. But I just wanted to put all of that out there just because that's who I am, that's how I've always done things, and so that's why it's not uncommon to see things like how I started this channel, where the first video video I ever put out was about the psychological aspects of gaming and like gatekeeping on games and if there is really a correct quote unquote way to play video games. And then right after that I made a retrospective on Excite Truck, which was actually the first video that I ever put together. And then following Excite Truck, I talked about Final Fantasy. And again, on that topic of Final Fantasy, I was playing Final Fantasy IX. I put like nine hours into it at that time. And it wasn't until recently that I got back onto Final Fantasy IX. <laughs> so hopefully that gives you an idea of how unfocused I am. Another one I played this year, and I've not even talked about it on this channel, is Digimon Survive. I literally got to chapter like eight. I think there's 
12 or 13 total. And I got all the way to chapter 8 around like March, and then I just stopped playing the game. And then maybe two months ago, I beat the game. And it was awesome. But again, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to do a video on it. Some games I just kind of play for myself. Some games I have trouble figuring out how to present them in their best light to you. And, you know, that's okay. So hopefully that explains some of my process. I don't look at the library of games I have as like a backlog or things that I need to finish or complete. I look at them more like a library of games where I can choose to check one in and check one out whenever. You know, sometimes you get a book from the library and it's just not really that good. So you just go back to the library the next day or a week later or whatever and you get yourself a new book. It's not that big of a deal. That's kind of how I look at it. And honestly, in a more fun way, I sort of look at it like Blockbuster, like you're checking out a game for the weekend. Growing up, that's what I always used to do. So sometimes I'm like, yeah, this week I'm going to try Astral Chain and then maybe next week I'll be on Live Alive, you know. So it's not always about views. I think that while chasing views is better in the short term, you know, I might see some gains on this channel that I wouldn't have seen otherwise. I'm much more inclined just to talk about the things that I'm truthfully thinking about right now because I'm being more honest with myself. And in the long run, I think that will be better for you guys and for me because I will be less likely to get burnt out. And just knowing myself and how I've always been with creative projects, I've been prone to burning out before. And one final example, I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but I think if I was really going after views, I would have tackled topics like Space Marine or Metaphor Refantasio, but I'm really interested in Romancing Saga right now. So while the first impressions review I did for the demo of that game is one of my lesser viewed videos, there's a good chance that I'm going to pick that game up as soon as it drops, and I'm going to play it, and maybe you guys will see a review one day, maybe not. But with all of that said, I've stayed on this topic for a really long time. I'm going to now move on to the things that you can expect to see from me going into the end of this year and going into next year. I know Christmas is right around the corner and I want to do a giveaway, so I'm going to probably announce that in like late November or maybe early December. It's not anything super crazy, I was just going through some of my brother's things. He had a Switch as well, and no one else in my family really plays games, so you know, I have his Switch now. and. While I can't part with his Switch itself because it's got a lot of really cool things on there and it's just like a sentimental value type of thing for me, I do have a duplicate of two different games and I know a lot of people have these if they have a Switch already, but I have a copy of Super Smash Brothers and a copy of Breath of the Wild that are just sitting here right now and so I would love to give those away. I'm going to be keeping my brother's copies, obviously, but my original copies I would like to do a giveaway for, and I'm planning on maybe signing it if you guys would like or something like that. If you think that would be cool and you don't have those games, I would love to do that. And later this year, I'll do a more formal announcement on that. So stay tuned for that. I really enjoyed doing the Eve of Calamity giveaway, and so I want to keep that spirit going, especially around Christmas time. So some videos that I want to put out next year, I'm working on some documentaries, actually. There's one that I've been working on on and off across the course of this entire year, and I'm really hoping that I can get that out by the time the one year anniversary of this channel comes up. And it's not going to be anything you guys would ever expect from me. It's way different than anything else I've ever done, and I don't know if I'll ever do another one quite like this. I don't know how it's going to do. It might completely bomb. It might be one of my more successful videos. It might bring a lot of people happiness. Some people might dip out two minutes in. I don't know. But it's something I'm really passionate about, and so I'm going to be sharing that with you guys around my anniversary. And I also want to do some more like casual content, you know. I shared the uh, stickers that I got recently from Joypad Lad as like a short, and I'm also going to be doing a video, it might already be out by the time that I put this video out, but I wanted to talk about my PlayStation 3 collection because I've recently started building up a PS3 collection after I got a Slim recently. That's a console I missed out on, and so there's a lot of really exciting stuff that's completely new to me, and it's been really fun. So I wanted to share some more kind of casual content and on that note, when I first started this channel, I wanted to have two different types of videos. Basically my full-fledged Humble Mud videos, which are the ones that you kind of expect, like my Pokemon video, or the Eve of Calamity video, or like my Naruto's Forgotten RPG on the 360. Well-researched, hopefully. I know I missed some things. I do know how to do a Turbo Attack and Gauntlet. <laughs> 
But I hope you know what I mean. These are my more high production videos that have a lot of editing and a lot of research put into them and a lot of forethought. And then I also wanted to do these Humble Lounge videos, which I have released some. Those would be like my reimagined childhood favorite games, my Paragon video, the Final Fantasy Woes video, which is the first one I ever did, and like the secondhand nostalgia video. But when I was first planning this channel, I originally planned to have my Humble Lounge videos kind of be like this, like the one that I'm talking in right now, where I've just kind of got B-roll going and the occasional graphics and things like that, and I might cut to another video if it makes more sense to explain it that way. But I wanted to do videos in the Humble Lounge where we're sitting around, like we're just hanging out at a bar or a cafe or something, and kind of have that vibe going where I'm just talking about things. Because sometimes there are things that I'm super interested in, but there's really not a lot of content there to like make a full-fledged video for and sometimes there are things that I just want to get off my chest and I'm also trying to learn how to get better at just speaking off the cuff like even though I said this video isn't scripted it is edited because I stumble over my words like all the time <laughs> but I want to get better at just getting my thoughts out there about random things and it would be a good way to also stay on top of things you know if there's new exciting news now I'm not going to flood my channel with these humble lounge style videos and become like a commentary channel or something like that. I'm not really saying that. It's just that I want to have the opportunity sometimes to just kind of talk with you guys about random things and I'm never expecting these videos to take off in the same way that my normal stuff does. They're more just videos for people who want some like extra humble mug content if you like just listening to me or if you like the things I talk about or you're trying to figure out why my brain works the way it does. So if you like the format of this video right now, please let me know because I do want to make the occasional video like this. And when I say occasional, I might make four to five normal Humble Mud videos and then the Humble Lounge video might be on the side. Some of them might be really long form, like this one seems like it's going to be since I just can't stop talking. Like my very first Humble Lounge video, the Final Fantasy video, I think it was like eight minutes long or something like that. So they're not always going to be super long like this. But if you look back at my old Humble Lounge videos, they really don't have this kind of feeling to them. They're basically just mini Humble Mud episodes. Like my my Paragon video has just as much editing as my you'll never play everything you want video, it's just a shorter video. And so while my original thought was to have these more casual videos for my Humble Lounge topics, my OCD kind of didn't allow me to do that, and so I just started editing the crap out of everything just like I normally do because I had a specific vision, and then kind of compromised on what my original goal was there. And while I'm super proud of those videos and it's not like I'm going to take down my secondhand nostalgia video or something like that. I just think I have a better idea of how to separate these topics from the future. And if you hate this style of video, I'm always going to do those thumbnails in green so you'll know. So all of my normal videos, if you haven't noticed by now, usually has some kind of purple color scheme. And then the Humble Downs videos have a green background instead, so hopefully that helps. And another thing while I'm on that topic of like helpful things to know about my channel, I get comments sometimes about like what video game is that or like what song is that or whatever. And I don't mind answering those questions, it's not about that, but I just wanted to let you guys know in case you've been a long time viewer but you haven't noticed this before, I include a list of every video game that shows up in the footage for my videos in order too. So if I capture footage of Sonic Adventure and then Super Mario Bros. 2 and then, I don't know, like Final Fantasy 8, I'll have them listed in order in the descriptions. And I do the same thing with the music as well. That was always a pet peeve of mine watching other people's videos and they show all these really cool games and there's like three of them that you have a question about because you've never seen them before and then you have to wait on a random other commenter to respond to you or maybe the YouTuber gets back to you in like five days. I always hated that because by the time that people got back to me I usually already lost interest in the game or forgot about it. So I wanted to try to prevent some of that for you guys and just kind of do the common courtesy of hey, these are all the games I'm talking about. But yeah, so to summarize, I'm thinking about doing some documentaries next year that I'm really excited about doing. And I'm also going to try to do some casual content if those videos don't get any views, it's not a big deal to me. Like I said, it's not about that. And these videos aren't really taking away any time that I could be spending on my full-fledged Humble Mud, full production videos, because Humble Lounge videos, if I can continue to make them like this, are going to be a lot easier to put together than my normal stuff. So I don't want you to think that it's taking away from the like, quote unquote, premium content. 
but that's basically the summary of some of the thoughts that have been going on in my head and just I wanted to just kind of get some feedback from you guys so like I said if you hate this right now let me know if you think it's pretty cool or if you like it but you're a little worried with how it might affect my channel or something like that yeah just share your thoughts and just let me know Another question I get a lot is why I don't do like let's plays or twitch streams and things like that and honestly like I said I just I can be kind of an anxious person sometimes like I am a pretty sociable person I'm more of the type of guy that like if we're hanging out one-on-one -on -one, I can talk your head off and we'll probably have a good conversation but entertaining an audience full of people is really intimidating to me and I already know just from having friends around or having my fiance around when I'm playing a game, I'm not good at talking and playing the game at the same time. And like I said, I stumble over my words all the time. I'm from the South, and so I really try really hard not to have that Southern accent. So I'm very careful with how I say my words and things like that. And I don't know, I just see that being a recipe for disaster. But maybe one day I'll do something like that. You know, part of this channel is me exploring myself and exploring myself as like a gamer um, and embracing that side of me. Because for so long, I really kind of shoved my love for gaming to the side. I know gaming is a lot more socially acceptable as a hobby nowadays, but growing up around the people that I grew up with, it still was kind of looked down upon. And so I embraced other stuff like music, but now I've really come back to games and really kind of found myself again playing RPGs and platformers and stuff like that for the first time since I was young. You know, I'll talk about this more in depth in the future, but for well over a decade, I pretty much only played multiplayer games. And so now I'm finally coming back into these single player games and loving it and seeing all these games that I missed out on over the last 10 years. And so this whole channel is sort of like a diary entry for me in a sense because I'm sort of building this thing for myself where you know 10 20 years from now I can look back at that like Paragon video for example and I know almost no one watched that but I can be like oh yeah Paragon actually existed again for a little while <laughs> and just weird stuff like that it's really helpful for me and I want to document more of my memories you know like losing my brother really put that into perspective as well because there are a lot of times that we hung out and I'm like I wish we had taken pictures you know but we never did back then because we were guys and we were like oh we don't need pictures with these videos I'm kind of cataloging my life and sort of my gaming journey and I'm glad that I have people that care enough to watch that it's really cool so another series that I really want to kind of bring back is you pick I play. The first time I did this and the only time I've done this so far is Reddit picked the Switch games I played on vacation. And while I really enjoyed doing that video, I got a lot of dislikes and stuff partially because I told Reddit that I was going to pick the games that got the most votes, but then they all picked the most popular titles and the ones that were going to take me like 80 hours to complete. And so I ended up going with the games that got the most well-written and passionate comments. So I pissed off a lot of people. <laughs> And so then I decided not to do that whole like you pick I play type of thing. But you guys seemed really receptive to that RPG poll that I put out recently. And I've been playing through Golden Sun now and really enjoying it thanks to your guys recommendation. And so I would like to do that in the future. You know, I'm not going to be doing that all the time, but maybe like every quarter or every couple of months or something, I'll ask you guys about, hey, you know, I've got these PS3 games, which one would you recommend? Or I haven't played my Xbox in a while, which one, which one of these would you recommend? You know, that kind of thing. And hopefully that can be kind of a journey for both of us together where I know it's always really fulfilling to see someone else talk about experiencing a game for the first time that you really love and seeing what they think and maybe they'll make you think about your favorite game in a new way or maybe it's just nostalgic or hopefully they'll validate a lot of the things that you feel about the game and it's just this positive energy transfer it's really cool so yeah starting with Golden Sun I'm going to probably bring that series back and I don't know where I'm going to go next you know this time I'm doing an RPG maybe next time I'll do an action game or a racing game or something else open world who knows but if you guys like the sound of that I would love to do that as well and kind of going along with the topic of like live streaming on twitch or other platforms um, another one that I've gotten before is people suggesting that I create a patreon and right now I just don't have enough time for that where I feel like I would be creating something that's valuable enough for you of course like this type of video could probably be a patreon video but I don't really think that's worth 
paying for necessarily. If I was to ever do a Patreon, I would want to make sure that the things that I'm giving you are worth your time and worth your money because I don't take things like someone giving me money, especially on like a monthly consistent basis lightly. And with Patreon especially, I know that there is that understandable expectation that if you are giving me money, you would expect something in return, right? And I just want to make sure that if I were to ever do that, I would have the time to produce something that's worth your time. With that said, I have thought about doing like a coffee account, KOFI. It's basically just, hey, if you like what I'm doing, you can throw me a couple bucks for a coffee to help the project going. I like the idea of that, and so I might do that here soon. Just because I am doing this during my free time, I spend a lot of time doing this, and while I love it, an extra couple bucks here and there would be kind of nice to help me with the expenses that I have to create this channel, to make the videos I make, to pay for the gear that I have to use, all of that kind of stuff. But yeah, I'm, I'm still thinking about that. I don't like asking people for money. And another thing, when the Gauntlet video and Eve of Calamity took off, I decided that I wanted to start producing videos more rapidly for you guys. Prior to this, I was doing like a video every two weeks or so. And that was sustainable for me for sure because I had a lot more time to kind of think about my scripts, to kind of put together things, to get my footage, to play the games. But I didn't want to sit on these videos that had done well and then just kind of let it die after two weeks because I know how the internet is. So if you've noticed, I've put out videos just about every week and sometimes twice a week, like I did the Romancing Saga and the games I was wrong about in the same week. And so far I've been doing okay with that. It is a lot harder, obviously. The Pokemon video especially was really tough for me to get out within that time frame. I'm going to try to work better on planning ahead and organizing myself, but I probably will take a break during the holidays around Christmas time, probably after I do the giveaway, just so I can kind of catch myself up so that in 2025 I can confidently get some things out to you. You know, when I started this channel, and this is some advice that I would give to channels just starting out, when I first started this channel, I already had the correct way to play games video done, the Excite Truck video done. I was actually halfway done with the Gauntlet video. I had done my Final Fantasy video, and I was almost done with the You'll Never Play Everything You Want video. So I had a lot of stuff done before I had ever launched my channel. And I did that because, again, I know I'm prone to burnout. I wanted to give myself a little bit of cushion in case things came up. Unfortunately, the thing that came up was my brother passing but because I had done those videos ahead of time I was able to kind of put that out while I dealt with everything with him so I pretty much used my get out of jail free card immediately <laughs> as soon as I started my channel but it helped me a lot um, and the gauntlet video was so ambitious that I came back to it months later after I had kind of gotten my footing with all of these other videos so that's why even though I had started my gauntlet video back in like December of last year, I think. I didn't actually get it out to you guys until July. But I have gotten a lot faster at editing my stuff. I'm always filled with ideas. It's just a matter of which of these six ideas am I going to go with for this week's video. So hopefully I can keep that pace. But like I said, I probably will take a break around the holidays just to kind of get my footing, to be with my family, and to kind of prep some things. Another thing I wanted to share for anybody trying to create a channel or any YouTubers that feel like they might be in a rut, hopefully this will help give some perspective. Um, when you look at my gauntlet video, that was the first video I ever had that kind of took off, I guess. If you notice, this video took almost 60 days to get to the point that it's kind of at now. So at the 59 day mark, it had 3,500 views, but for well over 35 plus days, it was sitting at about 1500. Um, for the first like half of a month, it had less than 500 views. And I don't really know what happened. I think it just finally got noticed by the algorithm, but basically two months later, it took off to the extent that it's at now. So I just wanted to share that because I know sometimes there are people that put out these like really incredible videos and they get like 100 views and they feel depressed because of that. Because even though views aren't everything, it does help to know that people care about your video. 
And sometimes you feel like you just got crushed by the algorithm and there's nothing that you can really do about that. But I just thought maybe it would be helpful for people to see that, you know, it took two months for this video to pop off the way that it did. And for a solid like two or three weeks, it was actually one of my lowest ranked videos on my whole channel. And considering that this one, <laughs> my longest one, the one that I put the most time into was one of my lower performers for a long time. Yeah, it kind of bugged me a little bit and made me wonder if what I was doing was correct. Like if people even cared about Gauntlet and then all of a sudden it popped off and I had all these people coming through, whether they were hating on me or whether they were loving what I was doing, it was really cool to see. So yeah, for the YouTubers out there, I just wanted to put that there. If you're still struggling, just know that sometimes these things take time to develop. But yeah, that's basically it. I just wanted to check in with you guys. It's not anything super crazy, um, but I wanted to take the time to thank you guys for all of the support that I've been getting over this year. It's been literally, it's been so insane. And I also wanted to make you guys aware that I'm thinking about doing some giveaways, thinking about doing some documentaries and things this year, thinking about doing some more casual content like pickups videos or talking about the library of games I have. If you're interested in seeing like what I've actually got physically, I can always Always talk about that kind of stuff. Thinking about doing some more Humble Lounge videos where I'm just sitting here and telling you guys about some things that I think are interesting but maybe don't warrant like a full-fledged Humble Mud video. And I also just wanted to kind of explain why I do some of the things that I do because I do get a lot of questions about that. So hopefully that gives you some insight. Hopefully this was entertaining for you. If you have anything that you would like to see from me, feel free to put that down in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you hate the idea of some of the things I've mentioned so far, let me know that too. I'm always going to be doing things for myself first as a gamer, as a fan, as someone who loves games and sees them as an art form, but I know I also need to do things for you guys as well. So with that said, anything I promise you guys like this Golden Sun playthrough and things like that, I'm going to follow up on. It might not get out as soon as you want it to be, but it will be there for you. But yeah, I really love the community that's been built around Humble Mud, the House of Humble, <laughs> and I love seeing these familiar usernames coming up and all of the people offering their advice and their takes and the, even the meme comments. So I just really wanted to thank you guys for all of that. You all have been a great source of happiness for me this year in a time that could have been a really, really dark and sad time. And I have had some dark and sad moments, but this channel always is a bright point week to week for me. So I wanted to sincerely thank you guys for that. And if you're still here, <laughs> thanks so much for watching. I haven't cut this video footage up yet, but right now I'm sitting at 55 minutes. I'm sure a lot of that's going to get cut because I just rambled on and on and on. And even now I'm sure this video is going to end up sounding super unfocused. But if you're still here, thanks so much for watching. And as always, stay humble. <laughs>